Hi. I did it again. I did it again. Didn't take too long. Second week, I didn't have my mic unmuted. That's on me, not production. Anyway, it's time to get into the showdown. It's our second matchup of uh, the day to round out the second week of play. And uh, yeah, we've got the Guangzhou Charger getting ready to go up against the Hangzhou Spark. Uh, I've also, Jesus Christ, how have we done that? <laughs> Welcome okay. to the Joe down number 14. That's actually brilliant. This is a good, what a good way to start. Look, we've just so boomed. Not, oh, not only God. was Flitter booming profit, the Flitang boomed the entire Soul Dynasty. We've also been boomed on the broadcast here. Let's get this started the proper way, though. It is Joe down number 14. All time record start is seven to six in favor of the charge. The most recent win for the charge in 2022 in week 18. So, a very close kind of rivalry that we have here that's been going on for a while the three years yeah. that we have the three four years it's been since 2019 where they've played up against each other but as we said before we came into this game you know the pre-show before even match number one this is most likely now the matchup that defines first place in this region like i i think there's a real um is there's a real narrative about these two being the legitimate number one and number two team in apac right now we just don't know who is number one and who's number two currently no, we do not. But this will go ahead and settle it. Sorry, I'm still recovering from the double mute. It's uh, it's it's excellent. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I just wanted to make sure you didn't feel left out. You know, you gotta have solidarity. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate that. You're such a great co-commentator. <laughs> just not letting me uh, look like a fool by myself. Uh, but yes, battle of the strongest teams that we've seen thus far up at the top of the standings. We'll see who's going to be able to overtake and uh, have that sole possession of first place, as it's gonna be pink versus blue. And we've tried yeah. to we've tried to replicate that a little bit. I think your I think your lights are washing out your pink shirt just a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I, I've gone I for the swear blue side. it is pink. It's not like a strong. It's not like a baby pink. Look, this is the Barbie movie's not out yet, which I know you're looking forward to that one. Um, so I just went for like a light pink, but it doesn't show very well in broadcast. But I swear I am actually wearing pink, and while Seth is obviously wearing blue. Yeah. So we, we, we've tried to get ready for this because obviously, like we've been saying, this is the big matchup. This is the one that we've been looking forward to, uh, you know, kind of since the, the, the season started. We got to see both of these teams and how strong they look given the kind of revamps that they've undergone. So definitely one that uh, if your friends aren't watching with you, if you're not having a nice little watch party, tune it in, then uh, wake them up. Whatever they're doing, tell them to stop working, go home, stop paying attention to their families. It's time to watch this game. And with the starting five of the Guangzhou Charge, the choice they won, Jimmy, Piggy, Farway, and Xerneas. Congratulations to Jimmy, by the way, on becoming Custa's new best man uh, for his oh wedding. Oh my God. By the way, has he, has he, he's invited Jimmy to his wedding. Has he even invited you to the wedding? He hasn't invited me. Uh, no comment. Did you invite him to your wedding? I did. You know what? Screw it. I'll lay it out there. I invited Custom to my wedding. He didn't attend, and I didn't get an invite to his, and I'm pissed about it. Anyway. And Jimmy got an invite, and is now the best man. Oh, I see where this stands. And I also, see where the loyalties lie. And also, won't be able to attend because he's probably going to be playing in mid-season if they, if they continue on this track. We'll have to wait and see, though. Maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, but Custa, I hope when you're watching this after you wake up, you reconsider your life choices yeah but don't worry, uh, every single time I, i've said this to him every single time guangzhou win if they do win again today but every single time guangzhou win custom will wake up to about 100 dms about all sorts of different fortifications coming through from jimmy and all that kind of stuff so uh yeah that's uh <laughs> na is not ready for the results i'll say that and that already has been proved from the first result of the night but what are we going to get out of this one because this is a contentious series where you know you have a lot of people pulling for the charge spark obviously look like a monstrous team at the moment and i guess i will bring up one extra thing uh, that kind of dropped recently from chengdu hunters facts which uh posted a lot of insight from the chinese community but jimmy hosted an interview after uh guangzhou's win yesterday versus Seoul dynasty and it was it was um it was jimmu with amung and Kyo, who all three of them are ex chengdu players and they interviewed uh Zernius, jimmy and Farway and basically said, look, how do you feel about your chances tomorrow? And Farway just straight up said, guys, I'm going to be happy if we win one map. This is going to be a tough game tomorrow because <laughs> apparently in scrims, Charge have not been doing well versus Angro Spark in scrims as as far back as two weeks ago. Farway is something, saying something like, yo, dude, in scrims, I'm playing bat and I went 0-14. This dive coming through from the shy leave and I was going to say Goose but 20 is going to be starting out. But that trio is absolutely monstrous. But with 20 starting now on map number one, I have no idea what to expect because 
He hasn't played a single map yet for yep. the Hangzhou Spark this season. This is his debut in the 2023 season after we saw him last retire in 2021 playing for Chengdu. Oh, well, we've been curious in their previous matches, you know, are we going to see 20? Has Gushui been working on some of his other, you know, tank play? Or, you know, is that sub-in going to happen? It seems like they've decided that now is the time. So we'll see how this fares. But obviously, big matchups here. Uh, the ones that really focus on the ones that my eyes are going to be on. Actually, I mean, it's kind of in every regard, you know, because even the support matchups are still really tight knit. Yeah. Uh, but Shy leave versus Choice Awan and Jimmy, I think that's got to really take the cake at the end of the year. And at the same time as well, um, we'll talk about Shy Jimmy first because these are the stats that are being brought up. I think last year, it was pretty clear that Shy was one of, if not the best hit scans that we had had. Um, Lip had a bit of a more, I would say a, a more unfortunate year last year. Shanghai weren't quite up to scratch, although Lip really... I think uh, heated up towards the end of the season, especially as we got into playoffs. But Shy was a monster the entirety of last year. So he farmed up stats. And so far, I guess these are the stats from this particular season over the course of two matches being played by both teams. Um, yeah, this is across all heroes. I'm a little surprised that Shy is so much more damaged given that he's actually playing mostly Sombra, which is a supportive role as far as DPSs go. Your Trace is doing most of the work there. You're just setting up for dives. Jimmy is almost exclusively played the Hanzo, yet somehow got less damage. So that's a little weird to me. We'll see if Jimmy plays a Hanzo again, because he hasn't brought out any Sombra so far this entire year. Well, we will start things off on Ilios for our control map, then we'll move into King's Row. You know, bread and butter once again. Then we'll see Havana, Colosseo, and the Antarctic Peninsula if we can go the distance and have five maps. I mean, we already got more than we bargained for in the first series. It's very early still here in South Korea, only 7 p.m. for us. So I'm I'm hoping that we get a full five out of this one because it is the marquee matchup. It is the teams that are at the top of the standings at the moment. So we want to see a big cataclysmic clash between the shows. And what is Ray cooking here with a 20, aka Elsit? Remember him in 2021 in Chengdu? Yes. What is he cooking with this 20 sub in over Gushui for Ilios? Are we going to be seeing some diva play? Because I'm looking at the three different rounds here i think winston would have been just as good though i don't really see any particular avenues here where the diva is clearly better than the winston i'm not really expecting anything like a sigma well the coach already left. what else is 20 <laughs> yeah he's, he, he wasn't even here right he wasn't even here the 20 is just he's taken over he's gone rogue he's just forced his way onto the team on the starting roster all right get ready to unlock the doors here is Jimmy potentially going to be coming out with this Ash. Would do well to leave showing the Echo. This choice here, Juan, just going to be keeping everybody forward. Swaps up with the Tracer. So, not going to be doing much the same. This is the second time we're seeing Leave come through on the Echo, and that was versus uh, Dallas Field, I believe, King's Row. The Shy on yep. the Tracer as well, and eventually Leave ended up matching the Ash. So, will he do that again? Jimmy is on the Ash. Won't be Shy versus Jimmy on the Ash. Leave going there if required. We talked about the fact that Twenty was going to come out and play an all tank, and it's indeed Diva being oh. matched by Piggy and Lee with the opening first blood. All right, those can take it down. Twenty, however, going to be Demex. Choice hit one. It will go ahead and break him out. Maybe Diva's still staying alive for now. Sleep has to go back up into the skies. Langs is right there to try to keep him alive. Monk now taken down as Piggy able to find two. It's off that pilot form. Lee with the beam though. Gets in on top of Jimmy, finds that kill. Peel coming through, trying to desperately keep Zernius alive. Looks like so far going to be working a treat. Him top it up playing well. low breaks in contact so that beam can't find value and that's going to be the point locked down first and foremost here but the charge Xerneas on critical hp there fantastic pocketing by piggy and Xerneas staying alive able to find linkser as well and that will be both supports gone monk died a little bit earlier would have been on his way back with linkser down you're still down to only just the one support tongjo mostly leading across the board except for a couple of the positions i say mostly leading. i think i'm mostly just talking about piggy and Xerneas here the double support ultimates if far we can also get this nano that'll be really huge shy with the first ultimate across both teams can we see a pulse so i said one about to have his as well shy on the hunt for it is noted the whip shop comes through looks for the stick not gonna have it though far away able to jump out it's a little bit of damage from the pulse but overall not gonna get too much and one gonna be taken down shy however does manage to pursue a little bit deeper does find far away xerneas as well going to be eliminated the legs up under fire down low on hp needs that passive healing to come across just between trying to stay alive Jimmy now picked off. 20 can be broken out of the mech. It's a bloody brawl, but it's one where the charge is still coming out on top widely. Maintain control at this point. Self-destruct not going to be able to find anything. He kills off the baby diva, so off the back. That lobbing. 
Doesn't find too much of anything. Oh, good Rez comes through. Get yeah, back that's actually the huge. Yep, Rally now gonna be popped. Both teams have two members Byronated here. Quinty nearly has a nano, so could have another live. Leave is really keeping the team up. Still no flip to come through. Charge of a gigantic lead here. Can they get the baby team from Biggie to stop the remake? Self-destruct out. Monk, however, going to be taken out of the fight. Nano, now not there. Piggy, however, going to be demecked immediately thereafter by Leaf. The Sticky Bombs will go ahead and finish them off. One for one, but down to support. Jimmy with a bomb here on the point. Just continuing to keep this one occupied. Now it's into the final fight territory here for the Guangzhou Charge. One more, and this round will be theirs. Yeah, Spark, despite looking decent in some of these fights, Leaf turning it around. Again, they just cannot get this cap. So they're starting from zero to 99 deficit here, but they hold all the cards, they have all the ultimates. Choi would have to land a good stick yet. Already the recall's gone, but they have a player advantage. Yeah, it's a different nade. One from far away, able to find the first value. Shy taken down. Monk, I mean, he wants to desperately use this nano, but he's just not on? given the opportunity. He's taken down once more. 20 now broken down of the mech here on the point. The baby that immediately killed off the point. The self-destruct can even go through. No kills found. Leave eliminated. Choice they want. Find someone on the low ground. Wow. It's 100% to zero. Guangzhou charge. Just wiping the floor of the Hangzhou Spark to start. What a start. I mean, yeah, Choice to One had the only ultimate there with the Pulse Bomb. The other ones weren't built up until a little bit later on. Unfortunately, Unknown's not going to be able to translate this one. <laughs> I have to get the uh, the AI translator out for that maybe a little bit later on. There's a lot of, I think, uh, camaraderie here between both teams given how many Chengdu members are on both sides. Yeah. Chengdu's death created two extremely good Zhou <laughs> teams, so... I guess, uh, I guess you take that sometimes, but for the Hangzhou Spark, wow, what a tragic start though, 0 to 100. Despite, I'll say it again, winning some of the fights, they, they just never got those caps, and the final fight as well, they had a clear ultimate advantage, could not execute, multiple whiffed ultimates, Monk repeatedly dead, couldn't get his nano out, that made the difference. This time though, you have Levon Tracer, Shy on Sombra, this is far closer to the Hangzhou look that they've been dominating on so far. Jimmy here with the Hanzo. See how he fares. I was kind of hoping for the Echo Mirror matchup that maybe Longer Chargers go back and try to play that one just so I can selfishly get Xerneas back on a Mercy as well. Fortunately, not to be, but maybe in the future. Well, you'd, you'd have to get Choi on the Echo and then Jimmy would have to play Tracer, which is not yeah. really part of his pool, sadly, so. Wouldn't really work out with the charge. Shots across. Point contested by both sides. No one taking too much damage, though, so no one severely at risk. Storm arrows go across, just looking to break 20 out of this mech once more. Had a very early break on it last time, but I think it's not to be found so far here on Ruins. His leave is getting hounded down. Low on HP and 20. There it is. Xerneas gets on top of him, finds the kill, takes down that pile form. Diva, he falling on the back end as well. Means that Angshou, they get a decent amount of ult charge built up here in the fight, but the charge is the first yet yeah. again to establish control. I mean, you're starting to see now where I think... The fact that Piggy even chooses to play Winston here, it probably is preferable for the Spark to have had Gushway in. The Lucio, Rico as well, I mean, they're, they're kind of playing this fast-paced composition that just doesn't have the same level of safety as playing the Brigana that every other team plays alongside the Winston, which is far more meta. We'll see what Shy can do with this EMP, though, because they do have a Sombra, and the Sombra has found a kill. As far away, taken out of the fight. Shy Two. doubles down, gets another one. Twisted one now eliminated. Hell of a lot of pressure taken out, and that's just going to be the fight one. Rally even committed there by Xerneas, but... Not finding any value whatsoever. Now he's going to try to see if he can make it out of here with his life intact. Suit is coming through, so it seems like the staggers are likely to be inevitable. You know, playing elusively, oh, and the pulse wow. is actually going to be committed to that one. I mean, given how long they delayed, now they're down their Hanzo. I don't mind that necessarily, because the Nano is also invested. Yeah, I mean, Charge clearly want to engage here. They're, they're wanting to turn the fighter on. They have the ultimate to play through, but a brilliant stick from Lee. Super slick. Fancy feet, the moves, dancing around Jimmy. And the Guangzhou Charge just forfeit the Nano. It's a Pulse for Nano trade. I think that's a positive trade for Hangzhou Spark, especially considering they'll be able to match up on the 32% now and overtake. Well, bonus on the charge. The lead established for the Spark. Wow. And Piggy just gets absolutely destroyed. Oh, oh, eight. The Eat on the Dragon Strike 20 takes it away. Oh, that fight could not have gone worse. Yeah. Frank, she, it probably could have gone worse if more ultimates were expended by the charge, but. Certainly going pretty sour at the moment. And Leave with another continuing. onto Jimmy, and uh, at this point, Spark. Can they chase further? Probably not, given that Piggy is respawned. But how quickly did Piggy die, by the way? It looked like he went from 500 HP to zero in a second. Yeah, I mean, he just disappeared. It's completely and utterly destroyed. 
We'll see though, as they get ready to come back in. The primal still held. Langs are getting zoned out, but still very much alive. Still holds on to the beat. They might not need it. Seems to get chipped away after with the Kitsune Wrench. Choice they want dead. So the Kong Joe Spark still gonna be in a very prime position to try to take this round. Final fight territory coming through. Choice they want just now respawning. Piggy up on coast side. Goes back over to the point. It's forced to use that primal. Taking him far too low. Sound barrier now pops. He's gonna try to knock somebody off the side of the map, but he's just hitting shy. It's not gonna be good enough. In the meantime, 20 gets himself into the back line, finds far away, takes him down. Neck will be broken. Some struck goes across, and they will not be able to deny the remake, but Sirius gets caught up in the explosion. And Choice at One's dead again. Mung combines two kills. And as we hit 99%, that's gonna be the cleanup coming through. Far away. Living up to the name, nowhere near the objective to keep it contested. And that's gonna be the Hangzhou Spark tying us up as we go into a final round of well. I mean, once Hangzhou actually get into the tempo where they get to set the tone, they get to engage on all the dives that they want to. It's a vastly different look. Leave and shine. That combo, even with 20 instead of Gushui, getting extremely active. I mean, you look at, I think, the second to last fight, or nearing the last fight. There's just very little that Charge can do. We're seeing the double kill come through from Shy here, where no EMP required. Didn't have it yet. Just yeah. straight up manual hacking and good shooting. But again, looking towards that last fight, it was basically just Piggy on Prime or Choi with the Pulse Bomb. No real engage tools. You've lost your Dragon Strike a little bit earlier. I don't think they had a Nano in that fight either. So for the Hangzhou Spark, it was as easy as get that Primal out from Piggy, then ignore him. And they did. They just go straight in the back line, kill Farway, and Piggy can't do much with the Primal, and that's how they win. You wanted, by the way, to see the Echo. You're going to get it now. And I said that Jimmy wasn't really going to look towards the Tracer. He's going to show it. Let's see how it looks. Uh, but Cernius isn't here with the Mercy, so it is just choice they want, kind of on an island, very much rely on these you know, health packs and Farway shots to keep him sustained. The hack comes through. Could be bad for now. Translocator is noted. Looking to see if they can get Shy out of stealth to actually be able to finish him off, but he is proving quite elusive so far. And finally now. decides, yeah, you know, I'm wasting too much time. I'm not building up my ult, but right as he destroys it, Shy does go in for the fight, ends up getting taken down. Leave as well going to fall. 20 going to be deep mech once again. Long show charge. Going to be three rounds in a row, starting things off in control of the point. We'll see, though, if they can close it out for the 2-1. That's like extreme patience as well, because all that while that choice of one's away, I'm just spark of a 5v5 and now you get the combo that you're looking for to leave come through in the echo as well Linksa on the mercy Xerneas is not going to make a swap yet because he's nearly on to rally but maybe in a future fight back to what I was saying earlier about camping the translocator there there's a world where that does not work out for the charge if they don't instantly find shy and get him down which they do so piggy it heads up play by him I mean they were 4 v 5 that whole time this choice they wanted was just camping it but right as he decides to Go ahead and destroy it. It's okay, Monk gonna get eliminated. Piggy finding that one. Just a trade for Xerneas, but now far away gone. Oh, Shy. Wow. Cleaning up both. Let's leave his sense swapped over to the Echo to look to mash. Thanks though, however, is there for the mercy. Fight. We're gonna go the way up here of the Hangzhou Spark trying to get that flip. 41% established, but they're cleaning him off the point. Piggy's actually gonna be using the self-destruct. Recall, to just go ahead and dodge it. Shy stays alive. Nothing found. Let's see if Piggy's gonna swap after that one. I think this is this the first pulse bomb for Jimmy as well. It's taken him a long time. Again, not one of his normal heroes that you see in his pool. Shy, we have seen Tracer playing in the past, and that's part of the brilliance. Of the, oh, my I mean, Mug just snipes Toy out. Xerneas okay. needs to be playing Mercy for this. But he can't. He's 80% to rally, so he's, he's just stuck at the moment. And Choi, like you mentioned, he's also stuck on an iron and charge. They've at least got the lead on the point, but it does feel like the comp is missing a couple of pieces. Notably, the Mercy. right now Jimmy just getting completely and utterly corralled at the moment by Shy just trying to answer back puts a little bit of damage down onto them the beam from Choice A1 not going to be fighting too much and I'll just go across Choice A1 amped up goes for the dupe opts in for D.Va 20 going to be broken out of the mech but does have that self-destruct and they can't kill off the baby D.Va Choice A1 pulls back away looks like trying to build up this ult himself obviously rapidly is growing 20 again to the mech they find it. Self-destruct at the ready. Choice they want. Let's it loose to try to clear out the point. It does so. It's a flash back in. Hung just Spark trying to maintain control, but the health bar is just far too low. Eventually, it will get found out. It will fall. That's going to be the charge regaining control. All played by Choice of One. Ton of damage done there as well. Brilliant dupe on towards the Diva. And 20. Being made swiftly and not allowed to do too much. They leave. Holds on to the duplicate. They lost one of the supports. And Hunter Spark just accept their loss. It's now evened up 61 to 61 and even further for charge. And 
We're now looking towards the first Tracer Sombra duo of the Guangzhou Charge, but not in the way you'd expect. It's jimming on the Tracer, the Choi on the Sombra. It's a little bit different. And as Xerneas, you know, still alive, unable to swap towards the Mercy, I think Choi just knows that you can't really play Echo here anymore. Oh, I mean, Leaf gets do it, but he's going right in for the Brigida, trying to get that rally online. Far away, dead. The rally instantly built up. Flanks is still under fire and will fall. Piggy able to hound him down. Takes the potential res out of the fight, at least. Leave still here, just beating and battering Piggy into the corner. Something struck gonna have to be used to keep himself alive. Jimmy, he's in the recall. Oh, no oh, remake! Those sticky bombs in the end, they deny it right at the very last second. Quincy just jumping in, solidifies the kill. 99% though, locked into the side of the Guangzhou charge, but no Piggy. Not sure if they're gonna be able to win this you one have out. You have to rally Yep, they're looking for this one. If you got a rally, sorry, if you got a nano, it probably has to be on Xerneas here. Piggy's still coming back from score. There's no more kills, sparkling yes. something else. I mean, it is on the Xerneas, and he's able to make some use out of it. Now the EMP going to be used. Choice A1, catching two. Langsa taken down. Xerneas finds a second elimination with that. Self-destruct up over the top. Hug around the corner. Choice A1 does manage to stay elusive. Keeps himself alive. Running back into the mech, though. Not able to get punished. Now Xerneas no getting pushed into a corner. Shy gets in behind him, finds the kill. Leave, swapping over to the soldier. Just trying to join in a little bit faster. Jimmy duking it out. Recall popped. Shy doesn't have one of his own. Grabs that mini pack. Now looks to trade this back here against Jimmy. He actually dives in behind Shy. Gets the melee hit. 20 and sick it down. But in all the chaos, Hangzhou Spark do get the flip back into their favor. Yeah, those lengths are just diving in while the charge were off trying to find kills. And because of the flip, they get a full reset. Leave goes down though. And 20 still in spawn. Picked off. Pulse bomb out from both sides. Neither finding a kill, but Piggy does get demacked. That's just about as good as dead here. We're talking about a diva. Gonna try to get himself back through. The shot, Still however, flip. pounded down far away, finding that kill. Now Langsa going to be eliminated. Xerneas gonna be likely sent off the side of the map, or maybe even into the vent. Didn't quite get to see it, but Langsa does find one before getting taken out. The flip is back in. It's 99% to 89. Hangzhou Spark sliding this dwindle, getting everybody as collected up as they possibly can. One last hail, Mary. No ults on either side, but the EMP, EMP. now built up. Troy, he's, got a, he's got it. He lets it loose. 20. He just can't really get any damage any longer and instantly gets taken out of the mech. They look for a little bit more. He's swinging around the side. Crashes through. Pushes him back off the point. Beat. Gets dropped. Catches all five members from the side of the Hangzhou Spark as he looks to push back. Monk. 10% away. The Kitsune Rush nearly there. Piggy going to be demeched. The Baby Diva going to be finished off. Rally from Zerni is trying to keep moving the fight, but now Troy's one is going to oh be gone. Look the elimination. The Kitsune Rush comes through. The Rally not going to be enough far away. He holds onto the beat, but it's just two members left alive. And he's running back over towards the spawn. He's trying to get people back over here into the fight. They know they have to concede this, but now it's just 10% left to go. What a turnaround. Remember, the only way Sparky would get the turnaround is because Lynx just stole the point away while Charge were off trying to chase kills. And just off the back of that one flip, Spark stay alive and knows double 99. And leave us EMP. He's got the self-destruct, but this baby diva likely not going to be able to survive. As I say that though, Faraway drops the beat. It looks like he can get back into the back. Shy taking down the pulse bomb. Not found. The pulse bomb from Jimmy goes wide, however. Then he gets hacked and he cannot survive. Leaf gets the kill. Lang's still going to be taken out. All the healing responsibility here on Monk. Trying to keep him in this fight. As the flip gets ready to come back for a long show charge. Once again, in control. The pulse bomb from Shy is here. He lets it loose. He oh, finds the stick. Certainly is going to be taken down, but now 20 is going to be eliminated as well. A tank for a support. Faraway rejoining. Piggy goes in deep, just looking to break down this back line, separate the members of the spark and make it a little bit easier for them to get picked off. Jose Juan farming away, 13% left to go for this next EMP, and that could be the turning point. That could be the final nail in the coffin. A hack across, Shy gonna be dead, far away, finds the kill, the EMP comes in. Langsa gonna get taken down, and the Kwangjo charge will finally clear the point, but man, what a back and forth between the two shows. It's a Kwangjo charge holding their heads just a little bit higher as they take the first map of Ilios 2-1. This is such an exciting start already between the top two teams in the region. The Joe down is delivering, and it's just map number one. That last fight went forever. Huge props to Hangzhou for keeping it going, though, because they looked like they were about to lose that final round at Ilios. Many, many fights previous. I say many fights. It was long, one extended fight, but where it started was Spark being taken down to barely any members. It was basically his only Shy and Lengsa. Maybe one other player trying to keep it alive. And again, Langsa gets a flip, and because of that one flip, Spark keep it going for so long. But in the actual final engagement, just before the map is over, 20 is killed and is booted into the well. So no chance of the Baby Diva surviving, throwing a little bit of aggro, perhaps threatening a remake or anything. And 20 also dies when he gets the remake. He was on like 95, high 90s in terms of alt charge for self-destruct. So just couldn't find it for the reset. And the final EMP, the nail in the coffin was choice in one. Drops her on top of the spark, cleans up, and charge start out 1-0. What a hell of a performance from both teams, though. And that is exactly what we want to see when we've got the top two in the region clashing against one another. 
hell of a belt between the two. Happy it went to three. Hopefully the series goes to five, but Guangzhou Charge, they do get that first blood draw here on Ilios. And we get ready to go into King's Row and see who's going to be able to come out on top. And granted, I mean, that's even more opportunities to see these Echoes on either side, given that Leave has already shown it, for us, shown it to us before. Either way, I'm excited. There's some high-level play coming out. Amazing clutches from both teams. Hopefully that's going to continue. So don't go anywhere, because if you're not already convinced, I, I'll tell you, you don't want to go anywhere, because this is some incredible Overwatch that we're witnessing already after one map, so you don't want to miss a second. All right, we are back, and even though the break is only three minutes long, I think it's far too long because I cannot wait to get back into the action between these two teams. Ilios out of the way, narrowly goes to, to the side of the Guangzhou charge. Start the series off with a 1-0, but it was very hard fought by both sides. Guangzhou able to extend it by picking up a singular round for themselves, but I mean, it was contentious the whole way throughout. You were talking about it, Avril, you know, the camaraderie and the rapport between these players, given that there, there are, you know, players that have been on the hundreds before, they have played against each other um, many times in the past, and that also is apparently reflected in the chat box, as we do have some translations of what was being discussed here. Xerni is starting things off saying, oh, you dare to play Mercy in front of me, I'm the, you know, the greatest Mercy player, um, <laughs> and then apparently leaves saying, I got the first kill for three straight rounds, how about that, to which Xerni said, you're such a badass, daddy leave. So there you go. They're having fun with it. We're having fun with it. Uh, and I hope that that tight knit knives edge action continues as we go into King's Row. I mean, I've got to refer back to the the you know interview on Jim Moo's stream again, where Farway again said that they'd be happy with one map when they got that one map one now, but they looked like you get way more competitive than they probably gave themselves credit for. But without that interview, we would have probably said, look, this is a, no one knows who's going to win this just yet. They seem to kind of doubt themselves coming into this. Tr clearly, they're much better than they consider themselves to be. But beyond that as well, um, how does this look now for the Hangzhou Spark as they put 20 in? And it was okay, but I, I still felt like that was probably like a Winston map. You saw a Piggy playing Winston there. I think Diva is probably fine for well. Kushway is definitely in now for the Hangzhou Spark. And part of me is like, okay, one map down. Wasn't the the proper starting lineup for Hangzhou Spark that you'd expect. I'm not making excuses here, but it's like, you definitely didn't think 20 was going to start out on Elios today. If anything, he might come in to play a Sigma later on if there's an escort map that really defines, uh, requires you to play that, which do we even have that today? Havana, yeah, actually, maybe Havana. You, you could see that, but at the same time, who should play Havana last time? Just played the Rhine which uh, Piggy would actually square up on. Um, something else that was funny in that interview is Farway goes, look at the players on our team, look at the players on their team. They have three dads on their team. Shy, Leave, and Gushray. Call them the three dads. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, the battle of pink v blue will continue here in a moment. We just got to get a little bit of extra time for Gushray to get settled and ready now that he is going to be stepping in. Expect to go right back into that Winston v Winston and see how this is going to fare. I mean, Piggy has had uh, some shocking performances for us. And if he can best Gushway on his best hero, I think that that would have very much continue and obviously, you know, potentially give Charge a very significant lead. And Sign saying, uh, I'm going to watch Overwatch until I die. Same, TBH. Respect, respect. <laughs> I mean, if the Overwatch is good as that, give us map. Give her the thumbs up. Like, yep, I think I think you've seen I think I think you've seen We're the sign. Bag. <laughs> <laughs> you've had enough time to read it. <laughs> oh boy, I did double take there. Um, okay, so what was the second map again? Let me just double check one. King's Row. This is gonna be. This was actually the map that I gotta be honest with you. Hangzhou not only lo struggled, but definitely lost to the Dallas Fuel on this map. True. Yes, there was a back cap. Cheeky back cap. I, I technically wouldn't call that a C9. A back cap and a C9 are kind of different. But in either case, the back cap worked. Spark were already kind of struggling on the map anyway. So you, you would have probably said even without the back cap, maybe Fuel were kind of favored to win King's Rome. So this was not a comfortable map for Hangzhou on, in their last matchup and. 
Well, for the Guangzhou Charge, their actual lossless streak is continuing. I mean, they haven't lost a single map yet, which is very impressive. And that continues even up against the Joe Patriots on a map now where potentially Hangzhou could look weak on. Could be a 2 0 if Spark are not careful, even with yep. Hushui in. Let's see if they're going to be able to rally back here after the uh, the back cap. And pick up a win on King's Rope. It was good from the Dallas Fuel. I mean, like you said, not a C9 in that in that regard. They were winning the fight off point, but it was just perfect timing for Dallas to be able to, to sneak that card away from them and take the map away. But uh, it's a very different beast that they're facing now. The color might be blue, but it's a different shade of it. It's a much more fearsome one from what we've seen so far in 2023. So, see how well suited they are battle against Guangzhou but if, if Ilias told us anything then I think it's going to be exciting because even I, I'd, I'd say especially with Gushui coming back in this should just further raise uh the playing field and I think this map you know not only we can talk about the fact that Hangzhou did struggle versus Dallas but for other reasons as well I think this kind of favors the charge given that Jimmy has shown a preference for Hans already okay he did play a little bit of trace on Ilias but again that you've basically never seen that you can even yeah. look at last season in terms of play time Jimmy never played it. To be fair, it was a soldier meta, so Jimmy was just going to one-trick that the entire way through. The point is, in Jimmy's entire history of the Overwatch League in his career, he just hasn't really played that hero, so you're not expecting it. You are expecting him to stay on the snipers. A little bit of Widowmaker. He popped in for that clutch Cassidy play on Havana in the previous match as well. But the Hanzo has been his bread and butter. And this map, especially A, is just so much better suited for Hanzo. It allows you so much area control, map control. B as well, brilliant for Hanzo. I think generally speaking... The Sombra Tracer Dive is superior at most places, but I would actually favor the Charge Comp specifically for this map. All right, well, first in the attack, Jimmy back to the Hanzo. Shy there on that Sombra. They start working their way forward over here towards the statue. Getting himself up on the high ground next to Hotel. Just trying to scout out, send a, a couple straight arrows in case he gets a random headshot here and takes down Shy. Not going to be quite as lucky, but uh, far away. He gets jumped on. Jimmy tries to go to the rescue. Leaf's also going to be able to swoop in from behind. Comes up with the elimination. Leaf starting to frag out. Finds two kills. And ignored as well. You saw from Jimmy's POV. He was looking over towards the side. He got not quite one clipped, but he got taken down to like, what, 50 HP by Leaf? Yeah. And as he jumped down, Leaf gets to clean up. To be fair, I think at that stage, Charge already losing one member. It was looking pretty bad. They needed to trade straight away. Couldn't do so. Spark will be off to a blistering start now on this defense. The difference of having Gushue in on the Winston, I mean, this is, I would say, the real Spark that we've seen so far this year. The one that has the dangerous dive. The three-pronged attack in Gushue will be one of those prongs starting off the second fight. Yeah, he's only taken down. Jimmy, forced back. Does get a actually straight headshot across on the leave. And nice as a little fadeaway pick. We'll see if we can find more off the back of this one, because Gushue is going to be zoned back through the archway. Because he was antsied out by far away. return. Jose Juan. Be the first to pulse online. Very much value he can get as the first tick gets ready to be snatched up here from the side of the Guangzhou charge. Since you say one wanted to pursue a little bit deeper, but right now he's the lone right, person playing point down. to get the cap, so he can't really chase in and try to find any picks. Now Lanano's gonna go out as Gushway goes diving into the back line. Xerneas the focus fire, but gets himself out of there, and Jimmy opens things up. Monk take it down. Langza down low on HP as well, and that's gonna be both supports now eliminated on the side of the spark. Three ults on the three remaining players, but with Gushway dying, that's just gonna be a wash here on the point. Finally, Gushu dives super deep as well. To be fair, he locked out both the supports of Farway and Xerneas, but for his own team, they couldn't stay alive. With both Monk and Lynx are down and no setup for the EMP, that was basically the only re-entry tool was the Nano. Hunter Spike lost so much space that you need a Shy on a big flank, and that just wasn't available in the last fight. So three ultimates online between the three important dive members here, and they couldn't get that off at all for the charge. They held on to their ultimate, so it's a cap. And it's an economical cap where they didn't have to yeah. use anything, which is even better for this team. So Jimmy twice now, I believe, has sniped out leave, which is just a huge boon for the charge. Big pickups is Choice of Wands. Scouting forward here alongside Piggy. Noting enemy locations, anti on the Gushway, so has to play back from now. So that unless he pop that primal. Pulse before I believe does go out, but doesn't find anything for it. Not even a sliver of damage is okay. Choice of Wand uses his, and that's Langs to take it down. Rally not used, but obviously out of the fight and quite far away. Now he needs to try to rejoin. Xerneas in a fire, the rally is rolling. Rally. Nano goes across, just go ahead and keep him alive. Gets the stun of the Gushway in the back line. He's also going to be anti Meanwhile, Leap does manage to find Piggy. Gushway likely to fall at the end of it all. Will get taken down after grabbing the Mega Pack. 
just not enough that Leaf can do right now in this situation. I mean, everything basically other than the rally that the Spark had burns. They do get the ult out of the Guangzhou charge, but they can't stop the push. And Piggy really split up the team there as well on top of the Dragon Strike. So Black tried to make that turn around happen via the EMP. Only got one trade and that was onto Piggy. The rest of the players couldn't quite get the job done as the back line of the charge is just staying alive, steadfast, not going down. Good area control now shown by the charge with not a lot online for the Spark. Can they just rally in and try and force this one through? They're going to have to. Spark don't have any other options here. Good hacker with Piggy. And the anti. He jumps back on oh, Jimmy. Dude! He does it again. Another headshot. It's like, what, his fourth or fifth one on the map so far. Shy taken down. Just further delaying that next EMP build. And now oh. he gets leave to boot. It's both the VS eliminated by Jimmy's hand. Rally is going to expire. Jimmy takes down Langs as soon as the shield drops. Monk going to be eliminated. It's going to be a fairly brisk push here into point B. Wow. This side of the Guangzhou charge, nearly four minutes in the time bank for the final stretch. Three kills, three headshots, one after the other. The legendary Fornicator has commenced <laughs> the intercourse once again. I can't believe we just said that on broadcast, but there it is. Caught me off guard twice in a row there, but I cannot disagree with you. Sleep on the Jimmy there. Bubble from Piggy just keeps him protected. No hope of being able to take him down. Chad will have fun with that. Pulse goes out. Looking for the kill. Not going to be able to get it, though. Monk nanos up Gooshway. Sleep down low. Shy going to be taking a nap. Far away in Zernius, however, will finally be felled. And that is going to be the Hangzhou Spark finding some semblance of stability for what feels like the first time in the map. Well, they're going to have to hold for a while now. Good reset. I mean, that's what they need. They need to start forcing some big resets versus the charge and then build up towards this EMP. Hold their ground as forward as possible. Not give up that first corner. It's a long time to burn through. I mean, it's three minutes out of a total eight for charge. And we can still get a lot done here. Spark have definitely struggled on this defense. Nano online. Which is still play forward. Primal still held, but as he tries to leap out, they want to hound him down. Sends him back, and just like that, Guan Pei charges straight back in onto the cart. Pushing this one forward towards the final corner. Which we still want to do. Oh, just again, finding Monk. They lose Xerneas, sure, but Lengs is also dead. Consistently trading up. First, they want fearlessly <laughs> just allowing for the seals to come across from far away rather than go for the health pack. And now, now Shy is scouted in the back lines. Jimmy's on for the hunt. He's gonna try to get this headshot once again to connect. Doesn't quite happen though. And goes Piggy, slips straight away. So decent by Monk. This is still ultimate advantage for Spark, but when are they gonna get a fight going for them? Because they're losing so much space. Halo's moving up. Getting juggled around just a little bit, but the primal will expire. Still taking some damage as Torzai 1 gets involved. False bomb goes across. Shield gonna absorb that one. So Monk stays alive. Rally health going across, just keeping him in this fight. Eventually, Jimmy, of course. He gets another headshot. Piggy, however, gonna be taken down. The front line broken, but Jimmy gets another one. Shy, eliminated by the Swarm Arrows. Concernia swings across. Just to get rid of Gushway, and they should be able to do it. One more hit. Jumps over, grabs the Mega Pack, but it looks like Choice they want. It's going to be in his hand to try to finish it off, but far away, we'll go ahead, lob in the nade, get a shot in, and that's going to be Gooshway now taken down. A little bit of healing in, Monk staying alive, and Shy now swapping over to the Widowmaker in desperation. He's trying to have his Shanghai Dragons moment here to turn the tides of the fight. Oh, that's a nasty one. Catches Choice they want as he jumps in, but it's not not a damn thing he can do against Piggy. It's Goomba Still a headshot, though. They are buying some time. Piggy away at just a little bit but jimmy nearly has his dragon strike to go ahead and clear up the cart Langs that zone back the storm arrow finds the kill the dragon now let loose and the cart can glide through to the finish a minute and two wow. seconds remaining so crucially over a minute remaining for them as they're gonna say c9 not sure if that's the case at all but either way clearly the charger having fun with it and they get to the end of king's row it's a four c9 because well you can't really touch the payload when the strike is going through it so they just run up. I mean, Lee definitely tried to touch there, but you just died to the Dragon Strike, and that's all you need at the end. Piggy sits on payload. Jimmy farms from a distance, throws in the Dragon Strike. Shy tried his best here, like you said, trying to do one of those flitter moments from the Shanghai Dragons oh so many years ago. Let's take a look at that 3 k moment again from Jimmy. Just annihilates the Spark front lane. Double DPS here, plus the support, I believe. Speaking of Lee, gone. Yeah. Just gone, and then he gets the other one right as the shield goes down. I mean, it's just basically frame perfect for that shot to come across. I mean, there's there's so many moments. I wasn't sure what we were going to highlight after the completion there because there was also a, a cancel on the EMP. Xerneas having the rally up, gets the shield bash, denies it from Shy, straight into... Uh, and then he goes over the Widowmaker, I believe. Yeah, this should be it. There we go. 
Thank you, observers. So many good plays. Zernius, he, he did that so many times in 2021 versus Lip as well. When Chengdu were actually competitive in the year that Shanghai Dragons won the entire Overwatch League playing the Tracer Sombra comp with the ball, we all remember. Xerneas was legitimately one of not the best Briggs that year or his ability to be one of the few Briggs that could actually shut down Lip and we see that again now but this time it's versus the Spark versus Shy. We start out this defense with a triple Byronade just to farm a little ult charge. Lead back over to the Echo. To be expected, I mean, Jimmy, if you can get headshots on this one, I'll be so very impressed, but choice I want just goes in and instantly diffs Shy. Kills coming across, just continues the front line here for the team. Is leave widely going to be safe up in the skies unless that headshot does come through because he's got playing so once again providing the pocket. So playing quite a long range sort of situation now. I mean, Leave can still dive in on the Echo. All right, Shy was just going for some spawn picks, I suppose. Doesn't lose any ult charge there or loses very minimal ult charge in any case. This is the second time now Ooh. we've seen Hunter Spark play the Leave Echo on the offense. It looked okay versus Dallas. 9 HP and down. Probably yes. can't res that one. Yeah, certainly not. Should I say one going in just to make sure that it's completely unresable. Shine out into the back line, anteed out. Can't grab that health pack, has to use the recall. Still in a bad spot, but looks like he will be able to exit through the hotel. Choice of one, just keeping him honest. Choice got a pulse. I mean, to be fair, Shy swapped a couple here, so he's kind of slow in the pulse now. Leave again. Just Spark, uh, look, look like he's struggling to stay alive. Here we go, Lee finally gets something. Okay, yeah, Piggy over Big extending punish. just a bit. Leaf has that beam, finds the kill. Far away, just that, trying to deny these sight lines of Leaf. That, that was before Far Away had the nanos, or just before. Can they He's clean dead. up on more players now? Yep, there's one, and that's the ultimate gone. Yep. Does hold it, doesn't try to, you know, Hail Mary toss it out on the Xerneas. It seems like maybe some confidence on the rest of the team to try to contest here, but given the ult bank that's being built up here from the side of the Hangzhou Spark, I'm not sure if it's going to be possible, even if they do go for it. Looks like they are. Contest comes in. Choice A1 first to touch. Down to 71 and oh, Piggy oh comes in for the alley-oop. Choice A1 set the stage as did, as did Jimmy getting that arrow across. Shy knocked down low. Now they just need to try to deny that res away, but they cannot do so. Things up, finds it. Meanwhile, Leaf front lining. Pulse bomb from Shy finds Xerneas. That's the support's gone. Leaf taken down as well and the cap can finally come in for the spark. Just need to clean up a little bit more, but I mean, Piggy and Choice A1, they know that this is a suicide mission. Let's try to find any parting gifts that you possibly get. Build up towards those next pulses. A couple of not super late staggers there, but very rewarded, well rewarded kills for the Hungro Spike. Leave making most of that nano. You don't often see a nano onto an echo, especially in this meta where Winston dominates. But he'll be able to frontline just as you say. I mean, the 400 HP play through full confidence and just beam it out as well. We finally get to see the nano from far away to pig, but it feels like it comes in so late. They, I assume they're going to start with that. Obviously, Charge, we're going to go for the retake, given them that Piggy was back alive. They have ultimate to play through. Just could not get past the Shy Leave combo on the front lines, taking out the supports. And now we'll see how much distance they can get. Double Winston dives. We've seen this before. Yeah. Now we have. The leave going to be broken out. Pulse Bomb able to deny that one away. Zerny is cleaved down by Gooshway. He's doing his damage two. to the Primal Blade. Does find two and does get a third, actually. The stomp on a Jimmy. He manages to find another. Choice A1 will also fall. Chases in, looks for Piggy. Shy will be there to go ahead and confirm the kill. Three minutes, 12 remaining. See. Wow. Just gliding through towards B. I'm still impressed with Jimmy there. Despite dying, he just fades away two two kills onto supports. Like if that was another situation where it's a 2v2 instead of a 1v2 at the end, because it was what, Shy Gushway versus only Piggy. The fact that Jimmy just gets both Mung and Lynx is slightly wonderful for the charge. You need one more player alive. Yeah. We have all the respawns now, and they have the ultimate playthrough. This is where Piggy actually wants to use the primal in a position where they can defend the final fight on B. Shy though, he wants to use the balls. He's on the hunt, obviously far away, well aware of his position as is Xerneas. Shy still has been quite good about getting into the back lines and getting those sticks, but this time not to be. Chipped away at, joins back in the, on the cart with the rest of the team, but Jimmy oh, finds Jimmy. the opening pick. Shy gonna be taken down now. Piggy diving in a little bit deeper. A couple seconds remaining here on that primal before his HP car goes low. And I think he might have overstepped just a bit. Yeah, the beam from Leaf will be able to finish the job. Langsa and Leaf now up. going to fall as Jimmy gets that headshot through. Card control gonna be established here to the scene, but he's still committing forward. Everybody's so very low. Anti out of the two. Jimmy with a sliver of HP, but he managed to survive. Dirty and slept, woken up, but shield is raised, and Bushman just can't do enough damage. They try to take him down. The Nano is going to be committed all the same, though, just to make sure that he does persevere through this fight. 
Yeah. Alt versus Alt trade, so it's a net neutral for both teams here. But for the Spark, they can't afford to get staggered deaths. If you don't nano Gushui there, he falls, and the rest of the Spark falls with him. And this time it'll be leave. First kill to Jimmy. That's what he's needed. Stun though on the Gushui. Does manage to have that expire. Pops that primal. Gonna be taking a nap here in the back line. Far away, Anti to finish off. However, leave just getting in over top of him. The beam comes through. They find that kill, and that should be the push here on to B. It's gonna be three minutes in the time bank. Angjo Spark absolutely could best the time. Just certainly be able to make bit. a competitive. I mean, it's 102, so they got yeah, two plus minutes. Leave is on. A, oh, how many kills is that for Leave? He's on like a four in a row at that stage. Finally gets shut down by Piggy, who gets both of the DPSs. Angjo Spark will be reset. It's an early reset. The payload doesn't quite get past the first corner. The Piggy is also not going to be able to push too much further. So just the Winston's trading damage, working on towards their primal rages. It's a very important two piece there from Piggy to stop the bleeding. Saw the ensuing wet noodle fight there as Leaf does go in, gets the duplicate, dives into the back line as the Winston falls bump from choice I one. However, just find Monk and Leaf nearly taken out of that dupe by that dragon strike from Jimmy. Which way joining back over, just trying to feel for the rest of the team, get themselves out here to safety, but it doesn't look like it's gonna work a treat. The shy gets taken down, Zernis with a whip shot, finding the elimination. He goes low, but he's got that healing boost out from far away. They managed to clean him up. Two minutes now remaining here for the Hungjo Spark, the rally, the nano, gonna be the nearest tools. And now you get to see Shy going, okay. He, he, he looked towards the Ash for like a brief oh, second. No. What do you want to play here, Shy? Back to the Tracer, back to the Ash. I respect you need some more long range damage here. Leave. We'll forgo the Echo, which the usefulness of Echo starts decreasing outside of being able to duplicate and go double Winston. So respect that they're going to go towards this. Last time oh we saw God. this duo, and by the way, Jimmy just outplay Shy. Last time we saw this duo, it was Leave on Ash and Shy on Trace, and Jimmy does not stop. No, he does not. Choice they want. He wants to get involved. He goes in. He does find Monk. That's the cleanup now. As Shy, I mean, still just going <laughs> playing musical chairs on with hero roulette. heroes. He's yeah. on hero roulette. Goes for the Widow. Go back to the Ash. Can't make up his mind. The kid in the candy store. Just picking up things. Why? Putting them down. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, from a spawn, I think would make it is fine. But yeah, I don't know how much ult charge he's lost. Probably not a lot. But at this stage as well, they just kind of... Juggling through different picks to move their way forward. Time, by the way, has expired in terms of trying to match. It's Nano is gone. It's Nano on Shy to try to keep him alive. He's pushing up desperately, trying to find some value here, but Xerneas raises the shield, keeps everybody else protected. Rally now going to be expiring. Lots Green of HP, A couple people. He does go into the back line. Pulse bomb, finding a kill. And Trissant want able to find the stick. It's a little bit of damage on the Gooshway, but he oh. is just doing Ooh. the Lord's work right now for the Spark. Jumps into the back line, finds Jimmy, finds Faraway. It seems like at long last, the Hangzhou Spark should be able to get this cart moving. Crucially, I mean, the charge that two second advantage over a minute. If they can stop this from finishing with time in the bank, then it's going to be a yeah. draw attempt from the Spark. Disastrous. So, Hunter Spark have working out for them now. They don't have ultimates either. Had to spend a decent amount to be fair. So did the charge. But as we head towards what could be the final fight, in fact, it is. Jimmy has the Dragon Strike available. We saw the Dragon Strike did in the OT last time, prevented anybody from the Spark from touching. Pulled out the C9s, forced it through, and might be able to do that again. If he doesn't just get a pick to start out with, he's under pressure. Yeah, just completely dead. The dive, just too much to deal with. The Dragon Strike still going to be pocketed. He will be able to respawn and send this one through. Try to clear out the card a little bit. Coach Gun keeps shot at arm's length. Push way down low, but finds Xerneas. Gets healed back up. Dragon Strike to recall out. Leave keeping himself alive and well for now. Pulse Bomb Jimmy in the pocket. Up. Looking for a prime target. Choice one now has one of, one of his own as the Anas get traded out. Monk taken down. Pulse bomb out, Lee finding nothing, but choice at one gets Kushway. And that could be the difference maker. Oh. Jimmy here, now on the Widowmaker, gets the headshot across on the Shy. Lengza dead, and it's all on Lee, and there's nothing more that he can do. The Guangzhou charge, just seemingly looking for absolute perfection here in the 2023 season, will successfully defend on an Ives Edge once more at the end of King's Row to move up 2 0. Yeah, charge, they cannot be bested. Three series so far, and not a single map drop. I don't think the charge have ever had a season start this good. That's eight maps in a row, Kilios, that they have not lost. And now they're up against the Spark, because they're, they're quite literally kind of facing the best of the best they can get. I suppose the Infernal is still up a little bit later on. I don't want to just say that Charge has won the series, but it's a 2-0 lead match point. Hangzhou Spark required to be able to reverse sweep. Map number one in Elios, I said, okay, Gushray's not in. Not the actual starting lineup for the Charge, for the Spark, rather. Map number two, Gushui is in, but I did also mention that Charge would probably be favored on this map with the Hanzo, and Jimmy proves that correct to the T. How many more chances to the Spark get though? Map number three is going to be an escort, 
and it's Havana. Who knows what's going to happen here? Is are we going to see the Ryan again? This is a, another map that I don't think is super preferable for the Spark, given their strengths. They might be forced to play either Sigma or Ryan here, and that would actually favor Figgy. Oh, no, for sure. Especially if it's the the latter and the Sigma. And just given the performances that we've seen from him, you know, since he joined the league, even you know, in the previous week, it's just looked immaculate on that as always. But Guangzhou charge looking for perfection looking for that 9-0 start to the season and they just continue to just eke it out ahead of the spark by somewhat narrow margins here in each of the maps we've seen so far so big on us now on the spark to try to have a level up performance but at every twist and turn it just feels like the charge have the answer to see what happens though as we do get ready to go into havana but first we'll take a much needed break when we come back we'll see if the guangzhou charge can close out the series or if the spark will be able to elongate it so don't go anywhere All right, we are back, and it's time to go into what could very well be the final map of the series, but we're keeping our fingers crossed that that is not going to be the case, because Hangzhou Spark, they have been testing and trying the Guangzhou charge here in this series so far, but Guangzhou look like they will not, they don't want to be denied. This 9-0 beginning to the 2023 season have yet to drop a map so far. I'm going to see if they can go ahead and have a perfect two weeks. And at this stage, they're running out of teams to test them. I mean, you're, you're kind of sure. looking at the top of the table at the moment. Infernal do look improved after the week one loss to the Soul Dynasty, who just recently lost to Shanghai a little bit earlier on. But that would be kind of the, the last remaining team that I think would really challenge the charge. I mean, uh, I don't think we're going to get... I mean, Shanghai really got to... They did win versus Soul, but is Shanghai really going to do, do too much of the charge who are playing at this current level with all players firing on all cylinders? Legitimately, all five players on the charge are playing out of their minds and... Yeah, that Tracer differential is a little bit there as well. Although I will say part of the reason why Leave has less stats is because he's played more Echo. He sure. actually hasn't played That's as true. much Tracer over the course of series compared to Choi. Um, and what time he has spent playing Tracer, he hasn't been in duels versus Choi. He's been dying to Jimmy. Jimmy has somehow repeatedly sniped out Leave time and time and time again. And it's not just Leave. Jimmy's killed just about everybody with his Hanzo that he's been rolling his way through in the series and in series past so given that i don't think it's hugely surprised that choi is doing much better but yeah i mean leave hasn't had too much play time on tracer today and what trace game time he has had he's sped dead to jimmy yeah i mean it's, it's a good caveat to throw out there because if you do just put these up next to one another and i'm sure somebody's gonna probably post this to reddit and leave it out of context uh it does look pretty bad, so it is worth noting the the time spent playing on the on the Echo amongst other things. But yeah, I mean, Choi Sewan still having a whale performance, and Jimmy's just constantly doing what Jimmy does best. Yeah, I mean, you all know what I'm getting at. It's just uh, it's immense the, the kind of pressure on when you're you're in the fear of always being down one player. You constantly are down one player. And beyond that as well, your back line is staying alive. I mean. Huawei said they'd be happy to get one map. Now they got two. Now they might actually three zero and get the full sweep. And their back line is having far better survivability than Monk and Link. So I mean, I, I kind of alluded to this a little bit earlier on as well when I talked about the differences between two Joe teams. I kind of said that I prefer the Farway earnings back line. I think that's a stronger support line than Monk and Link. But I think the other three players you generally have over the three, you know, the tank and DPS of the charge, depending on matchups. In a Winston mirror, you probably favor the Gooshway Winston. But now that we move to Havana, where it's like, oh, what is he going to play? I mean, that's the big question mark. Mm -hmm. you got multiple maps here where, you know, Gushra didn't even get to play Leos, which I think would have been better with the Winston. And, you know, King's Row is just a fantastic Sombra map. I think Shy didn't do too much on King's Row. That was not a good map for him at all. And now in Havana, I mean, it's just not really a dive map, is it? So, not feeling confident about the Spark on this map. Definitely not. There's still plenty of uh, plenty of fans out here for Changshik. Congratulating him once again on his one-year debut. It's good to see. I like that. You know, if you were a fan of Changshik for the for the beginning when he was you know starting off as a player, uh, and now you can watch him as a caster on the Korean side of things. So lovely for the fans there that have been uh, 
longtime mainstay fans, friend. But now, out of about Changshik, this is about the Guangzhou charge. They're looking for that perfection. They're looking to get this 3-0. Hangzhou Spark, do they have it in them to pull off a reverse sweep and give the charge their first match loss? That is a question. Yeah, and I think if they can get this map, then Colosseo and Antarctica Peninsula are quite a bit more favorable for what they actually want to play. I think on Antarctic, you can still force a decent amount of Ryan and uh, Hangzhou played some Ryan on Antarctic. So we'll see if that happens. I would say neither of these two teams are super well known for their Ryan comps. Uh, Piggy did look good versus Bellas Riga yesterday, though. His charge cleaned up Sol Dynasty 3-0. Sol Dynasty having a bit of a rough weekend, as we've already seen their matches in Guangzhou. Having not just the best weekend, but the best start to the Overwatch League season of any season they've had in their entire lifetime as a franchise. So how mm -hmm. long can they keep this one up? Because Hangzhou Spark, you do feel like there's a little bit more that they like to show. They have enough time to do it, though, because they are, they are running out of maps. Yeah certainly are but i mean a reverse sweep now that would be uh that would be quite the statement and i think it would get rid of any doubts uh regarding their performance so far in the first two maps because i mean again it, it has been very very close they have been pushing charge and getting so very near to taking them down across the first two it's just eluded them charge have just been a slight bit better i want to see how we fare and you know again to harken back to what you're saying what these uh hero compositions end up looking like for them as we get ready to go into havana Big onus on Gushwe to step up here against Piggy, who we suspect will have the upper hand. Certainly, and the choice of comps. I mean, to me, this this map is either Ryan or Sigma. You could probably play a little bit of Winston here. I think uh, the last time Hangzhou were here versus Dallas, they eventually swapped to the Winston, which did look better. They started on the Ryan for spawn camping purposes. And then, in my opinion, they stayed on the Rhine a little bit too long because outside the spawn camping, unless the other team's squaring up and mirroring you, not a lot of point. If we do go towards snipers, by the way, I want to see Jimmy versus Shy in an actual Widowmaker battle because Shy's played some Widowmaker, but Jimmy was on the Hanzo. And then Jimmy played a little bit of uh, Widowmaker, but Shy was on some other hero. So we haven't had an actual heads up in terms of Widowmaker versus Widowmaker, sniping versus sniping. That would be really interesting here because Havana is also uh, quite a strong sniper map. Yeah. And Hansa could just come through. I'm curious to see. I mean, given that it's Havana, I, I think we can pretty safely say that the forward holds should be attempted. But maybe they're going to change up our expectations here. I mean, not As all teams. For now. Oh, I, I think there is a risk. Also, the, the problem here is for the spark. Like, if you do it, it's fairly obvious because you showed it versus Dallas already. I mean, whether you do it or not, Charge can just react to it, given that they have spawn advantage on A and they can just choose what they want to do. It's going to be the hard dive, and I kind of respect that spark. I'm going to stick They're to their guns and play up. what they got. Okay, they got to play super far forward. But I dare say this is not the type of comp that you want to be spawn camping with. Yeah, it's an interesting decision to say the least. We'll see how it fares for them, though. Is by identifying that left side exit from the spawn. Jumps over. He has to pull back, though. They need to be wary about not losing this cart and trading positions here. As Choice Wan tries to get himself into the back line, put some damage down on the monk, but it's going to be lead once again, finding that first blood as Jimmy gets taken out of the fight. Well, of course, have that spot advantage, though. Let's see if they decide to make any alterations. As Choice Wan halfway to the pulse, Jimmy barely gets to play. There's not a lot of good changes you can make, and even in 6v6 Overwatch 1, Anzo out the gates to break the spawn camp is pretty ideal. I think you've got to be a little bit careful here. Ooh. Eat a fire neighbor. His links are on one. If links are falls, or if anyone in Spark falls, the spawn hold is done. There it is. And there it is. Yeah. Finally broke the shield. Finally gets a headshot. Jimmy again. He's flying in kind. Shai has to make his exit. Push way down. Low on HP. We'll get hounded down. First, they want to find that elimination. It's just like the most casual shots in the world as Jimmy picks up two more. Gives a nice little wave. And the cart will start moving. It's just crispy, isn't it? So slick today. So sharp, even, and it's I, not just today. It's not been... the word I would use. I'd say it's buttery smooth. <laughs> yeah, it depends on what taste profile you like, what kind of uh, consistency and flavors and textures and all that kind of stuff. In either case, it's good. Overall, two thumbs up. We approve. Man on to Piggy. Flying forward. Give us on him back with the use of this Nano. Let's get a hack. Drops down. I mean, it has the problem, but I really wouldn't use it here in this scenario. He's really out of position, but he's not going to get chased here, so he should be able to rejoin about now. Yeah, no, okay. he's not. He's just dead. <laughs> yeah, wow. Uh, okay, he just dies. Gushu going to be nano, but we'll take a nap. Obviously, not at too much risk. And as he does get pulsed, because the head pops that primal. 
Uh, oh, oh right, Jimmy leave. jumped into that. Yeah, using one of his own. Manages to find him. Shy gonna clean up Xerneas. Far away, falling. And some more stability gonna be found here for the Hangzhou Spark. Forcing Wang to charge to do a full reset. Uh, to be fair, that's like multiple. Is that three ultimates out of the Spark for a fight that I feel like they won already just off the back of a Piggy find? Because Piggy, as I mentioned, he went super deep out of position. He went into B looking for health backs and all that. And of course, Spark, no, he's in there. I've got to chase him. But as soon as Piggy shows up again, They'll instantly hack him and just run him down, which is exactly what happened. So with the 5v4 tank down, Spot kind of had that one in the bag, but still spent three ultimates. Okay, EMP goes out. Throw it to take him down. He's going to maintain the tempo here. Only the rally left here for the Spark to try to maintain this hold versus three ults. Will prove to be a bit difficult, but they're still chewing up a very solid amount of time. Two minutes 45. Take it away as Jimmy dove on here in the back line and the heals. Can't come through. Nicely placed bubble from Gooshway denies that. They get that elimination. Rally now. Just go ahead and really solidify the fight. They can try to turn the tides of this though. This pop that primal gets hacked out and he's getting focus fired like no other. Down so very low on HP. Far away, at least gonna be grateful to get the nano charge up, but still alive. Might have to invest it immediately. More resources spent there. Well, obviously minus a nano just to keep Piggy up. They probably need to put some more resources to Jimmy. Jimmy has the most deaths in the lobby currently at three. It's not a huge amount, but it's too much for the charge. He's being hard focused by the spark. Also, Gooshway one gonna go a little bit wide. Doesn't find the kill. Nano there. On to Gooshway, just keeping him energized. 30 seconds now remaining. He's hung to spark. Look for the full hold. Leave, however, gonna be taken oh, out wow. as Jimmy just does what he does best. Finds that headshot. But can he find more? That's what they need right now. Get across the line and leave. Eliminated. Now we're spawning. Monk taken down immediately thereafter. He'll be finding it. Gets a shot on the Gooshway. Will get woken up, but cannot use that Primal to try to elongate this hold. So it will finally break through. It's only two and a half minutes for the second stretch. I think you would just choose not to Primal there, given how many players you lost at the hands of Jimmy in that last fight, who, when he's actually able to be kept alive there, free shooting into Hangzhou Spark, just taking them down one by one. And look at the ult differential. Like, Spark had so many more resources to play through, but just never the chance when you're just getting sniped out. And at a player disadvantage, you don't get to play your macro game of using ultimates, and so many ultimates had to be left on the bench that saved for this B fight. To be fair, though, for Spark, the silver lining is a lot of time went off. I believe we went to the OT, so that's fine. Three man EMP, but you have to translate code out, so no one's dead. Yeah, he immediately has a jump out, and the pulse bomb goes onto the shield of Xerneas, so kill's not found. HP bar's low, and leave cleaned up. Choice Awan finds him. It's China, spy checked, oh, and he just dude. he kind of just froze. I think he didn't realize what happened. Toys at one just gets the easiest kill of his life. Gooshway as well, getting worked at. Does to actually commit the primal and he's instantly slept. The rest of the team is just gonna die around him. Now they can focus all their efforts here onto the Winston. Toys on three, by the way, looking for number four. He's anti the midair. And he'll get out just oh. in time. Still saves about 150 HP for the supports to heal up, maybe give that Lynx a rally a go. Yeah, the Guangzhou charge. charged. It's They're so at the profit. precipice now. They're about to finish this map, and Hangzhou Spark have nothing to play through. Nano and Rally nearly there, but not quite. Gooshway just getting worked as he goes diving in. Jimmy gets another headshot with the Storm Arrows. Oh, shy as well to boot. Anti doesn't care. He stands strong, and they're just yeah, gonna nano him. <laughs> Why the hell not? Takes out Legs, it takes out Leave. Jimmy comes up with, what, four kills in the fight to get them across the finish line with a minute to spare. Now two minutes and 23 in the time bank for the final stretch. I think you give Jimmy play of the match regardless of whether Charge won or lose at the moment. This is just too much, man. This is far too much. He's heavily under pressure. And I said previously, Charge got to keep him alive. So they're just going to nano Jimmy now. Why not? It works. Keep him up. We're on to see. Hangzhou heavily losing space. Shy's like, I might as well go in the Hanzo. So we talked about a Widowmaker duel. Not going to see that, but we are going to get a Hanzo duel. Dragon strike. Let lose Shy dropping down. Crawls back up onto the high ground. Twisted one hovering around the back and shy. will be able to go ahead and find two kills. Whew. A damn good impression here of Jimmy. Quick picks coming through. Looks for a little bit more midair. The dive down and it's going to be Monk who actually snipes that one away. Again, Punks of Spark establishing control of this cart. Locking it in place. Just trying to drain things down a minute and a half an hour remaining. Shy trying to do the Hisu cosplay. Whatever Jimmy wants to play, I'm going to play too. <laughs> Counterpart on the other side. We're going to match. Let's take a look at the replay of Jimmy again. Melting down Goose Rate. And just a casual hitch on the Shy. Like, man, how do you even find that? It's so disgusting. I mean, sight's so nice we had to see it twice. But uh, meanwhile, we'll go back to live. Hangzhou Spark are dead. The card is pushing. I don't know what happens. We're going to need another replay, preferably at the end of the map, because uh, 
Charge just absolutely bodied them, apparently. You might get that one in the swapping size of the rounds, which will happen sooner rather than later, the pace that Charge are going. Nano nearly online with the primal. Things look pretty good. Shy's gonna have to Dragon Strike this one just to give an opening for the Spark to move in. Support ultimates being online for Charge is just a big difference making here. Yeah. And Hill's just being pumped now into Shy, trying to keep him alive. They know how important he is. Piggy, though, gonna be nanoed up, primaled up, goes diving forward. Shy lets loose with the Dragon Strike. Juggled around, but not into the corner, so not at too much risk. Continues to wall climb, trying to get away from Piggy, who's now anteed out and needs to make his exit. Comes back over to the opposite side. The heels need to come through, but they don't. They're just far too slow. And Gushway, popping his own ult, will be able to find the kill. So Looks sick. to send Zernia sailing off the side of the map. Looks like Lengs is actually going to find him with a whip shot at the very end. And Hunter Spark again, finding control at the very last moments. Couldn't be really better time for them. 11 seconds remaining. The cart needs to be touched. Piggy swapping over the, to the Diva to try to make it happen. I mean, it's a brilliant fight win for the Hangzhou Spark, but look how much space they oh, lost anyway. Even if charge, it's, it's hopeless. Don't touch. Uh, maybe they'll. No, not quite. So even if even if Guangzhou charge don't touch him, I think the distance is enough. I mean, we didn't see either of these two teams play up till C in their respective matches. Uh, go, was, did they both play? No, it was Shanghai and Dallas. They both played respectively on Havana. Mm -hmm. We never got to see a C. Those both ended on B. Yep. But I think this is such good distance for the charge that it okay. might not even matter. All right, Blessed Observers will be showing us how this fight uh, transpired while we were in the Jimmy replay. And yeah, I mean, just swaps over the Widow, finds the body shot kill on the Gooshway, and they just clean him up off the back of a nice pulse bomb stick from Choice A1. Mm. Alrighty, anyway, Spark. show me the Jimmy clip again. <laughs> Being spoiled by good Jimmy clips. Every match, it seems. Every map. Let's see Jimmy's card. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> uh, it's even got a watermark. Subtle off-white coloring of the Guangzhou Charge. The tasteful thickness of it. <laughs> <laughs> Understood. <laughs> what a quotable film. Anyway, uh, Hangzhou Spark, do they have it in them to make it just about to the end of this map? Because, I mean, as you were pointing out, this is the first time that you and I really have gotten to see Havana C. Well, this time Piggy's going to be playing the Diva, so it's a Zen Diva, so it's not quite double flex. Often you might see a Zen and a BAP, or maybe an Anna and a BAP, or any combination of two flex supports together. I think keeping the Brig is a good idea versus a team that really favors both Tracer and Sombra. And for leave, just out of spawn sniping, but he's thinking about the Genji now. He's going to go back over towards the Tracer, realize that, that might be better for the defense. We did see some leave Genji in the Dragons game. It looks pretty decent. He'll sheathe the sword for now and go back to the Pulse Pistols. I mean, if you can get in there and get on top of Faraway, do favor leaving that situation. Zenyatta is really going to have to rely on Piggy for the peel. Gushway looking to just Today, go ahead and jump forward. They get, yeah, they get the anti out of the piggy and they instantly break him out of the mech. Nice focus fire here from the side of the Hangzhou Spark. That's exactly what they need to kick this map off. The right foot forward. Jimmy just trying to save Gushway back, just sending arrows at him like, no, be gone! It's like Gushway, <laughs> not that dissuaded though. Well, speaking of be gone, Jimmy's had to give up his perch now. So Hangzhou Spark, they have high ground control. Payload is moving along swiftly. Troy though, decent amount of damage done. Jimmy with the first pick traded. All sand. Gushway does get taken down. Jimmy the trade, but the trade up widely there. This respawn still going to be favoring the spark in that regard. It's Choice A1 it's trying to find an extra pick, but it doesn't seem like it's going to happen. He was laying down low as he was. Good timing on the force back there as well, because the, sp the spark get to fight any longer. They get to nano Gushway, and things start to get a lot better for the spark in that situation. Oh. Spy check on the shy, so he's got to translocate and go for the reset now. And that slowdown is important because it allows Farway to build the Transcendence and he's going to get it for the next fight. So as the Nano comes on through, or maybe the EMP as well, you are going to see the Trance. Got it at the ready. Gushway jumping forward, Nano backing him up with the Focus Fire looking good. I mean, the Discord Orbs doing wonders here for the side of the charge. Anti expiring now on Piggy as well. So Gushway has to jump EMP up next. over the side. It's a slow creep up. It's really only Langs of playing the card right at the moment. That's going to be the stick. Chris Wan takes him out of the fight. Further delaying that rally and making them that much more exposed. HP bar is going lower and lower. Today. Oh my god, off. choice yep. been great. Finds another one, looks for even more, and you have Gushway gonna fall. Turns his sights back to leave. They clean him up. The hold for now, but 
minute 35 remaining. Hangzhou oh, so Spark, they should be able to get this cap. It's another fight where for Spark, they were so close to actually staging a proper fight where they have three ultimates online, double DPS in there. You got to get your EMP going, but you mentioned Shy had to translocate away. And while Hangzhou Spark is slowed down and resetting, and when I say resetting, I don't mean going back to base, but just kind of restaging their next fight. It's Troy that gets in the back lane. He takes out both supports with a stick and just the pulse pistols alone. And now Charge is just sitting on everything. Look how many ults Charge had. Okay, they're looking for Jimmy. Good focus target. They do get the EMP across. The choice they want as well. Going to be taken out. Thanks to the whip shot. Getting the finish. The rally rolling. Cardigan moving forward. Can retake? I mean, without the DPS, it's going to be tough. But they do have that self-destruct trying to clear the way. But Farway doesn't pop the trance. The pulse bomb comes he across. And he just ends up falling. Now Xerneas as well. Going to die mid-rally. They lose out on yeah. it. Any hope of trying to defend this. It seems like it's going to be gone. Piggy still pushes forward. They have the dragon strike to go ahead and clear the car for the time being. 1.84 meters left to go. I don't know if this is going to go their way. He hits the low ground. Instantly, he's going to be taken out by Shy. The cart is going to be capped, and the self destruct doesn't find any value. What be again dead. Do there? And, uh, it's just going to be him sent back to the further spawn room. Because he, was, he was pulsed. He was pulsed and stuck, and he should have trance. He was not. He was not hacked. I checked. Yeah. The hack went on to Piggy. Shy did not use EMP. So the hack was not on Farway. He had every opportunity to not die to the pulse bomb by trance, and he failed to do so. And because of that, charge through his double backline. Xerneas has his rally cancelled and charged on the back foot, forced to... Uh, no, that was actually during the um, retake attempt as well. So a huge loss there for the charge, but in what otherwise could have been a pretty holdable position. Similar time, though, i got to say, both teams were held up until OT on A, so we're working with the same time. There's him on the pulse pocketed. Which way? Uses the primal. Sleep from Monk. Not going to get the shot across, but... Piggy just kind of getting juggled out here into the open. As they pile in, trying to break him out of this mech once more. He does finally manage to break away. Separates himself, but Xerneas gets left out to dry, and Gushway scoops the kill. Now mannered up. Gonna be trying to stabilize his aim, but Gushway oh, then arrives. Yeah, catches him far away as well, going to die. Cleanup comes through, and it seems like Hangzhou Spark is gonna be good to go ahead and get this cap on B. That's a four piece. He's looking for five, but Choi's just gonna run away, as he should. <laughs> be gone, Tracer, be gone. Want, he desperately wants to try to catch Leaf on the sex balls. Still quite far away from it, though. Shy, by the way. Three quarters. And that will be the EMP that secures them B, especially when there's no support ultimates charge. They're all clustered up. Nothing. Oh, it goes wide. He throws it out the door. That could have been the thing that really sealed the deal on it. Now, in with a fighting chance until that EMP. Oh, never mind. <laughs> that <laughs> might say, seal the deal. They, they have right a window opportunity, but yeah. Gushway takes out far away. Gets away with his oh, life for betrayed. a little bit longer. But okay, Storm Arrows do come through from Jimmy. So it looks like Spark going to respect this. Not having the tank. They have to back away. Trying to finish off the EMP, no, though. No, they're going to commit. Okay. Yeah, Rally is rolling. EMP goes through. Xerneas instantly dealt with. That rally canceled, shut down, everything. No value to be found there. Jimmy now needs to do what he do, does best. If they want to pull off this whole thing. No, he's no, going to be broken out of the mech. Now they don't have that covering fire choice. They want to hound it down. Lee finds the kill. Baby even finished off, and that's going to be the cap coming through. Two minutes and 14 seconds. With a very big win wow, condition, no extra innings. Hangzhou Spark could absolutely take this to a fourth map. Piggy chose not to self he, Again, he wasn't hacked. He chose not to self-destruct there. And that wasn't a last fight yet. Only Choi went down. It was reasonable numbers for the charge. Still four plays alive. And they gave it up. They said, no. Not going to commit. Very surprising. I thought Piggy would retain that. Charge. Okay, Silver Line and three ultimates, but... You're in a sort of stage now where I said the distance on C might be enough for charge to win. It still might be, but Spark, they're going to make a hell of a run for it, and they have the time to do so. Shy spotted, Dragon Strike through, Pulse Bomb as well goes out, Gushway down low after receiving that. Shy continues to get caught, sleep, sleep on the lead, but he got the Hail Mary. The last second toss out on the Pulse Bomb, still takes down Jimmy, and now Cernius is gone as well. Far away, just trying to keep everybody alive as best as he possibly can, but so much space has to be given up with Spark. Longer charge having to pull back, and again, maybe gonna be broken into the mech. Ops have to go for the self destruct this time. I think definitely a wiser play. They have yeah. a little bit more room to work with. I respect that Piggy sacrifices mech there just to get the delay on the payload because his team was losing. If he delays payload, Jimmy. they can force more fights here. So that's exactly what's happening, charge. With a couple more chances, I think one more. They can win this, it'll be more than that. As you mentioned, Jimmy makes a swap happen. Under pressure, though, deleted. Yeah, I mean, rolls in. Tries to get that magnet across on the shot to try to get the pick, but instead he gets cut down. Gushway, scooping the kill. Picking up over the top. Tries to lob in. 
That's self-destruct. He's going to be hacked out. Nano, no, nope, going to try to get him back into this mech and will work a trade. Douchebag going to be taken down in the meantime. 35 seconds remaining. Shy exits the trans he takes him out 3% away from that EMP. And Xerneas is still 20% off having the transcendence. He needs it now. So clutch. Far away. Puts the nano to the baby deep to ensure the remake. That was so good. That means that the charge do not forfeit that fight. And now we are He's into swapping. what is officially the last fight. 20 seconds remaining. Piggy now onto the Junker Queen trying to do his best harm bit impression. Maybe it'll work. It is versus Winston. But there's Actually, Rally, there's I... Pulse, there's EMP. There's so much online. By the way, Xerneas, 11% away. Needs this transcendence desperately. EMP comes across. Choice A1, the only one caught up in it, but he instantly gets evaporated. Piggy now going to be hacked out, anteed up, and he cannot survive. Leaf takes him no down. Chance. Jimmy manages to find one. The transcendence is now coming through. Jimmy finds two. Leaf going to be taken down. Can he do it now here on the Cassidy? The sleep of the Gooshway. He's right here on the cart, but they're getting shoved away. They have to continue playing up on this one. 0.78 meters left to go. Shy jumps out. Xerneas gets a headshot. Lang's going to be taken down. Gooshway dead. Try to save one of the return. Finds the tank. And I think they've done it. They actually have 0.78 meters left to go. The swap to the Cassidy. The kills from Jimmy. He manages to clutch it out as the Kwangjo charge will take this series 3-0 and maintain a perfect map win record so far in the 2023 season. 3-0 in scoreline for today. 3-0 over the course of the entire opening two weeks as well. Xerneas giving major props to Jimmy. They know who the best play in this, ma in this match was, and there's no disservice to everybody else, but my goodness, Jimmy at the end there. He clutched on the castle. Two frags comes through, opens up the defense once again for the charge after them being two down. They lost choice right away. Piggy was to follow. Xerneas did not have the transcendence. He pops it at the last second for the last three plays between him, Farway, and Jimmy. And it's Jimmy on the cast with a 2K to turn things around with respawn advantage for the charge. They eventually grind out the Hangzhou Spark and they do not lose this third map. There will be no Colosseo. There will be no Antarctic Peninsula. And the Hangzhou Spark will lose the first Joe down in 2023 in spectacular fashion as the Charge assert their dominance as the best team so far in Asia-Pacific in the Eastern Division. Yes, sir. Glory to the Guangzhou Economic and Technological Development Zone. <laughs> well, I, I mean, yeah, of course. There was, there was really no doubts. As Jimmy is our player of the match, the guy just continues to pound at every twist and turn. I mean... You know, some, some rapid fire swaps from him there on Havana, but everything that he's changed over to, he was getting value. There's the Cassidy, the Cowboy, to go ahead and finish the deal. Yeah. But I mean, from the outset, he says, you know what? I'm not, a, I'm not, I don't want to play Sombra. I just don't, do, I just don't do it. And he doesn't have to. He continues to get away with the Hanzo. And he hit shots like this. Yeah, it's just why would nasty you? Stuff. Why would you need to swap? Quick, somebody wake Custer up again. Tell him that Johnny. Johnny. Tell him that. Tell him that. Yeah, Johnny as well. Johnny needs to wake up with a soul loss. Anyway, yeah. wake up, Custer. Tell him that Jimmy procreated again. It's happened once more. What a shot into Shy in that clip as well. As he's getting Just disgusting away. stuff. I mean, this is and it's consistent every single map. The pressure, the damage, the kills, the first bloods, the everything. And he was under pressure on Havana as well. And still, despite that pressure, look how casual these kills look. Yeah, I mean, it's just a, a day in the park for him. What an incredible performance. What, what incredible performances we have seen from Jimmy uh, in all three series that he's played. I mean, you say wake Custa up. I think I think the moment that this closed out and the, the player of the match graphic came up, Custa's eyes just snapped awake. He's laying in bed and he's just like, he just woke up with a smile on his face. This is the play. This is the clutch. Yeah. Just... Those two right there. Catching him, Gushway slept just for the dead eye just to soften him up a little bit more and then rolls in. Mag grenade, not needed. Forces Shy to go ahead and retreat. Finishes off the rest of the kills there. And it was just just brutal and great. I mean, this this series, while this might trade. not have gone what to five, I, I gotta say this was still such an entertaining series. Hangzhou Spark, they definitely did fight for it. They made the Gongjo charge sweat harder than anybody else has really managed to yeah. do. But unfortunately they cannot take these maps away from them the charge are just this, far too hot i mean this is one of those series where like you're gonna say the classic line why i'll say it where it's like well the scoreline doesn't really show the full story and that would be true but it's still a 3-0 sweep and i think we all expected a little bit more of the hangzhou spark today i when you looked at the schedule going into the final day of week two on sunday 
you see dragons versus soul you see spark versus charge you're thinking well spark versus charge will be the banger and then dragons versus soul will be the sweep wouldn't it but it's actually the opposite today it's the charge sweep and the spark in dominant fashion with jimmy at the helm on his classic uh, his classic hanzo signature where it's just highlights after highlights after highlights i can also confirm by the way that at the end of havana uh, just for havana itself he was on 13,088 damage per 10 and he was the only player that had five digits of damage per 10. yeah so they're gonna have an interview with him uh but man uh this is again as we often say one of those matches that kind of doesn't tell the story uh some people might wake up and say oh okay hangzhou spark just they didn't show up today guangzhou to charge wipe the floor with them this was incredibly close the whole way throughout um you know push to the limits and every single time you know that that spark they're just a couple meters away from closing that that objective from getting that push on the king's row from getting that push there on havana uh guangzhou charge just managed to hunker down and just deny it away from them to barely be able to close at the map to deny them those extra innings um just yeah. fantastic performances here from the charge and this is better than we could have ever anticipated. I think this also means that now the charge has stretched their overall, their all-time win rate over the Spark by two. Yeah, I, uh, they'd be one ahead. This is number 14. So what was the scoreline that I said before? I'm forgetting now. Uh, it was seven to six, I believe. So now eight to six all-time. It's, it's still a very close scoreline and we'll get plenty more Joe Downs this year, hopefully. And um, I believe they will deliver. Even this 3-0 was entertaining. It was quick. Uh, well, it was it was a, an, a very densely filled three zero. We'll say that much. Yeah. Um, and at this point, I'd be pretty confident in saying that Charge are the best team in the region. Uh, with the only caveat being that we haven't seen them play Infernal yet, and that happens next week. Charge mm. will play against the Infernal, and then they go up against Shanghai. As as improved as Shanghai looks, I don't think that'll be too difficult for them. Andre Spark will also have to play against the Infernal, so the Infernal is the only like missing question, the missing part of the equation for both of the Joe teams as uh, they look to start to become a bit of a standout. They were rumored to be the standout team in this region preseason, had a bit of a shaky start and now coming in much stronger, but charge is by far the team to beat. If you were to put a yeah. team at number one, definitively for me, it is the charge. I will be curious to see, you know, Shanghai, if they can continue to to improve and grow when they do get into that matchup, how they do fare, because given today and how Hisu and Viper played, I think that them versus uh, Choice Wan and Jimmy does make for a really exciting matchup, at least on the the, the DPS front. Um, so I will be very curious to see how that uh, continued growth does look and whether or not they're going to be able to challenge them. I mean, imagine the turnaround if we start off the season uh, with the, the Dragons looking the way they do, the Charges looking the way they do, and then it ends up being Shanghai giving Guangzhou Charge their first series loss in 2023. That would be a pretty wild reality, and maybe I've just spoken it into existence, but um, who knows? It, it, it could happen. After today, all, all bets are off because uh, it's just... You're, you're, you're really using the time stone there to, <laughs> to look at the possibilities. I'll tell you that much doing what i can you know just uh i mean you 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 benedict cumberbatch look like you uh yeah you know if i grow up the grow up the, the goatee and the, the mustache a little bit maybe but need a good english accent even though he's got an american one in for that character anyway uh yeah i'm trying to prevent us from going to movie talk too quickly here <laughs> as we or we're, we're teetering the on interview the edge and, and we we i mean we can talk about uh some of the other matches upcoming as well sure where uh dallas versus shanghai is going to be a banger, but probably not for the best reasons, not for the good reasons. Uh, as they, uh, to Shanghai, I mean, they, I would have heavily favored Dallas going to that one, but Shanghai beating Seoul starts to put into question a lot of um, doubts about them actually being the weaker team there. And Dallas have once again lost a, a match this week. And, you know, we're a bit of an opposite world where Guangzhou are the ones that are flawless without dropping anything. And Dallas are yet to win anything. And I think there was a stat line that somebody found out where this is, I think, definitively the worst start to a season Dallas have had so far in terms of map record. Mm. So that will need to be addressed. And previously, you would have said Dallas versus Shanghai would be where they turn that around. It certainly still can be. But Shanghai have proven today that they're not going to be slashes. They're not going to roll over in that match. Yeah. I mean, again, Dallas being the, the, the only like winless team now at this point is definitely a shock. Uh, but that will be an interesting one because there's, you know, many overlapping storylines there, as well as it's just two, you know, previous champions getting ready to duke it out to try to separate themselves from the, the bottom of the standings. So uh, there's there's a lot to look forward to. But I will say, 
good luck to everybody in the future weeks and you know for this week because i imagine a lot of people got boomed with their pickums uh and i think oh, that's that sure. going to continue to happen because it's just this continued thing whatever it is about apac every year uh it's so hard to predict who is going to be able to take down who it just the the rosters might change the teams that are on top and bottom might change but the inconsistencies in who should beat who will that's always exciting. be the same that's the that's the exciting part about this region is that uh, all teams are competitive and now that's proven by the fact that Shanghai got their first one of the season mm -hmm. probably quicker than most would have anticipated and there isn't I don't think there's uh, among the six teams there's not like a definitively oh this is a free win so you know the last time we had that was Valiant 2021 and thankfully that is two years ago now yeah and last year Valiant was super competitive this year Shanghai is already starting to catch up Dallas just needs to find their first win and Things will start to look uh, as they should. And it, it's weird to me that Dallas are the only team right now in this region that don't have a win yet. And they're already halfway through the matches possible to get a win. They've got only three left to go. Yeah. I, I mean, it needs, to, it needs to happen, obviously, sooner rather than later. If, if it does happen, like, they start, the narrative starts becoming that they are actually that team that you say, like, okay, yeah, they're going to end up losing this one. But uh, they're going to try to avoid that. So hopefully they can. Um, you know, obviously having teams where everybody having matches where everybody can beat everybody is significantly better than having um, a regular season yeah. punching bag that just gets, you know, passed around by all I, of the other squads. I, I got to know, like, how Charge are going to move forward with this, because I think even the most hardcore Charge fans probably somewhat doubted that they were going to get a win today. And if you were going to get a win for Charge, you weren't going to get it 3-0. So uh, how, dude, how far are they going to take this? Are they going to Korea? Are we going to see, are we going to see this team at the mid-season madness? I don't want to speak into an existence too early, but again, they are the team to beat. As we look at a recap here, Dragons with an, I'll say it, an upset win. Truly, I think it was an upset win versus Dynasty. Yeah. Given how poor Dragons looked just 48 hours ago. I mean, in charge with the not quite an upset win, but uh, you know, some would say it's an expected win, but definitely not a three-zero, not versus the spark. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, I think both results very much unanticipated. Um, both series, honestly, delivering uh, because it's as scrappy and messy as Dynasty vs Dragons was, it was super entertaining to go through it. It was great to see uh, Dragons, you know, find their stability, find their synergy uh, amongst their players. So. More to look forward to from that team now for the first time here in the season. But here's the standings. Sole possession of that first place position is in the hands of the Guangzhou Charge with that perfect 9-0 map record. And now it's going to be the Infernal, who are nipping, the Infernal who are nipping at their heels. As I said, the Infernal, the only unanswered question for the Charge there. Um, as I don't... You know, I mean, Dragons would have to do an incredible amount to do much against the Charge at this rate, who look flawless. They quite literally are flawless, given that they haven't dropped a single map. Dynasty versus the Spark next week, where, you know, Spark from their loss can look for a, a bit of a return to form. Dynasty as well, losing Dragons, they, they want to make a bit of a comeback. And then we have the matchup between the 2021 and the 2022 champions in Dallas versus Shanghai, who currently are both struggling at the start of the seasons, albeit with Shanghai most recently finding a win. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's never not a reason to tune into APAC, you know? Because you never know what's going to happen. Uh, Fuel fans, of course, going to be vying for that first win. But I I'm curious to see how, how the Dynasty are going to try to, you know, bounce back after suffering this loss. Because if anything, we know that while Dynasty have been surprised in the past and upset by teams, they usually are able to rally back because they're never going to be satisfied with that. They're never going to take that laying down. So I'm expecting yeah. to see some... Um, you know, some grinding that happens uh, during this week going into that next matchup so that they can try to, you know, reclaim a top position. Yeah, I think there's, there's as much as the 3-0 start is amazing and it will probably continue for a while. But um, at this stage as well, I, I, I expect the other teams to catch up. By the time we get to mid-season madness, even the knockouts, including the contenders teams as well, things are going to get really spicy out here. And, uh, you know, there's... Dude... I want to see if anyone can really challenge the charge. Who's going to be the first team to take a map off of this team? Or are they truly the best? And even outside the charge, I still think Hangzhou and Inferno are looking pretty decent. So looking at who our top two teams from this region could be so far, charge being number one is fairly satisfactory. Yeah. I, I mean, it seems like it's going to be Infernal and Spark kind of battling for that one, unless Dynasty do have that massive return to form, because things were definitely out of sorts here today. Uh, I mean, the cohesion that we kind of have come to expect from them, uh, the the pulse sticks, you know, lacking from profit as well. It, it was a very wonky set 
And I'd be curious to almost, you know, get their thoughts on it. I don't think they're going to be that interested in a loser's interview, but, uh, you know, why they think it, it went that way today. Maybe they just fully got completely and utterly shocked by, you know, how strong Shanghai did look and that's that set them off their game. But I don't really know. Uh, as you guys might notice, we are sat here on I'll tell you, camera for a little while, but we have I'll a surprise coming up and that's all I'll say for now. Okay. I actually don't even know what that surprise is, so I'm about to be surprised. Maybe you have to DM that to me. I actually a, have no it's idea. It's a bittersweet surprise, but we'll, okay. we'll get into it. But just before we do that, you talk about interviews. The interview I'm interested in is the one that will happen on uh, Jim Moo's stream later. I actually don't know what platform he streams mm. on. I thought it might have been Billy Billy. I'm pretty sure those are just VODs that are being posted. But um, Jim Moo, Among, and Kyo have been doing Chinese co-streams for the APAC matches, watching their own compatriots. And mm -hmm. I, I'm pretty sure, I hope they get some of the, the Guangzhou guys back on for Jim Moo's stream to ask them how this went. Because again... I allude to that very now infamous interview where Farway said that he felt like they were going to lose, and they came out and I don't, I don't, I wouldn't say stopped, but man, three zero is, it might, it's kind of a stop. So, dude, something went on, somebody cooked. Yeah, I mean, but that's that is kind of better, you know, to to at least have that humbleness and you know, I mean, maybe not doubt is doubt is definitely not the, the best thing to have, but at least not going in and, and having overconfidence, I should say, is uh, good to see there from from far away and from the Guangzhou charge. So they're still very much respecting Hangzhou Spark, this you know this Chinese super team, and, and putting a lot of respect on the name. But this is our surprise, as we are going to be giving a nice little <laughs> cake over to Changshik because. As I've been talking about him, we've seen plenty of fans in the audience uh, celebrating his one-year anniversary. Unfortunately, this is going to be his last day because Changshik Wait, does what? have he does have his uh, mandatory military service coming oh, up. Wow! So he will have to make a departure for a little while uh, from the broadcast, and uh, we will obviously be waiting with open arms for his return to to come back and join us on the casting side, and join us in the uh, the Overwatch League Man. production. But he's 25; he's pushing it, so it's uh, time to just go ahead and get it over with. <laughs> Wow, I, I didn't even realize that's um that is bittersweet. Uh, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to book in that dinner with him pretty quickly then before he runs off yeah. the military. Yeah, we learned um, about this midway through the broadcast, so I think uh, wow. I think I definitely will have to hit him up and, and take him out to dinner to celebrate that one while I still can because uh, once he's in, he's uh, uncontactable for a little while. So yeah, three years <laughs> out. See you in three years, buddy. No, it's not even. They have actually reduced the length of it, so I think it's eighteen oh, months, fair enough. something like that. So uh, about a year and a half. But we love Chang Shik. We wish him the best in his uh, in his service, uh, doing his due diligence for the country. But uh, that is going to do it for us now. That we had that little farewell to him. But uh, if I do go get dinner with him, I'll be sure to post about that on Twitter or something like that. I don't know. We'll, yeah. we'll have a nice IRL stream it. Yeah, we could do that too. Uh, like I said, his English is good enough. But anyway, that's going to do it for myself and Avril here to close out the second week of APAC. But guys, we will see you back here again for more APAC action next week. So set your alarms, mark your calendars, whatever you got to do. Because again, it's always entertaining, if nothing else. So we'll see, we'll see you guys then. Thank you.